Hey guys, welcome to the shop. I've got a neat little project for you guys this week. It's a quick one, um, which is kind of rare, but uh, that's what we're going to do, kind of quick. I got some viewer mail sent to me that is pretty neat, and I think you'll like it. Uh, at least I know that I do, and probably most of you guys will, because we're probably a bunch of like-minded folks. So, let's go over to the bench, I'll show you what I got, and what I plan to do to fix it. Alright guys, if you remember a couple videos back, Tool Post Mod Part 2. We tapped some holes in the top of our compound uh, with uh, less than uh, stellar method. We had to use the uh, AVE adjustable. Well, one of my viewers, John, uh, sent me a couple tap wrenches. Uh, I'm going to put in a couple pictures here in a minute. You can see what they looked like uh, when they showed up. But he sent me a big one, and he sent me a small one. This is a Cincinnati, or not Cincinnati, a Morse twist drill, number three. Pretty neat little tap wrench. Uh, really nice, you know, used, but... Uh, would last a lifetime still, even though it's probably quite a bit older than me. And he said, you know, like I said, he sent me a big one and a small one. Okay, so now that you've seen the small one, let me show you the big one that John sent. Ta-da! Look at that. That is a monster tap wrench. And uh, I got them cleaned up, these two. These are two that I owned previously. These are the... The only ones that I owned, this one's homemade, uh, and this one I bought, uh, uh, this is an English one. I love little tap wrenches. Uh, they're just a neat little tool, but this is a monster. Look at this. I mean, everybody knows how big a Sharpie is, but it's missing one of the handles. But it's just the stationary handle. The actual handle that operates the mechanism is still intact and works just fine. And we're going to take this guy apart and look at this mechanism in here and how this works. Because this is one of my favorite little tap wrench designs. So I'm going to bring you in close. We're going to explain what I need to do to fix this. And look at the internals of this and see how they function. All right, let's get a closer look at the way that this thing works. And it basically has two sets of threads, both a left-handed and a right-handed set, because the handle is threaded. It's threaded the same over here, uh, but it has a hole in it over on this side that allows this stud, which is a left-handed thread, to go through and into this handle. So let's take this apart, and it'll give you a little clearer, um, little clearer look on how it actually works. There's the uh, movable jaw, or the anvil, I'm not sure exactly the technical term for it. But. So here is a really neat design, and whoever thought of this was uh, pretty bright. This has been around for a long time, and a lot of tap wrenches use this mechanism. This is the shaft that, of course, goes through and connects to the move or to the to the movable jaw. We have two sets of threads here, both a right-handed and a left-handed set. So, when we move one, when we screw this one in, it moves the whole mechanism in a certain amount per revolution. But this is held stationary. At least this can't rotate. So it also gets turned, and where it's a left-handed thread, while we're screwing this one in, this one's getting screwed out. So that's the way it works. Basically, you get double the movement per rotation of the handle, and that is a neat design. I really am not a fan of the type, like this one. This is a homemade deal. This one was the one I made a while back, but I made it because it was easy to make. But the actual anvil, I guess you would call it, that pushes uh, the uh, tap into the V, rotates on this one. It rotates on this one, and it rotates on most of your smaller ones because there's not room for that kind of mechanism in these. But these present a problem when you start, you know, 
prying on a tap pretty hard or a big tap is that the threaded portion of the uh, the anvil or yeah I would guess I would call it an anvil that pushes on the tap ends up getting little grooves and it gets war and basically you can't it'll get to a point to where you can't tighten the tap up because you're fighting an uneven surface there due to wear and then you can't get it apart to clean it this one's tight but it was it was really bad when I got it a lot of times you can't get the thread out because it gets so mashed up on the end you can see this one Let's get a clearer picture of it there we go you can see it has a line in it and that's from the sharp edge of a tap you know getting wallowed on here and it just uh, it ends up creating a problem these are fine as long as you don't put too much force on them they work but this a much better design and you don't have to turn the handle to move the uh, movable portion uh, near as much so, real one thing about these is you gotta time them when you put them together and this it's pretty really really pretty simple I just take this handle and screw it all the way in well, first I put my jaw in take this handle screw it all the way in till this thread bottoms out screw this one back a little Okay, now this one's bottomed out. Now I want to back this, one, turn it out a couple of turns. Then I'm going to take this and rotate it. And get my fat fingers in there. To where it's tight. That way. Now, I still have a couple threads here to push on, so I know that it's timed correctly and will open and close properly. So now I can open it up, and I've still got plenty of thread engagement back here and up here. So that's how you do it. Real basic. Takes a few times the first time you do it, but I've had this thing apart a couple times, and uh, it's really pretty simple. But there you go. That's how this thing comes apart and how it works. It's really neat. You basically double your movement by having those two, one right and one left-handed thread, and uh, keeps the anvil from, from rotating. So now we need to make a handle for this guy. And this happens to be threaded one and a quarter, 12 that's the pitch so we need to find a piece of stock that'll fit in this and that's about the right length and I luckily have a piece of stainless steel pipe now I'd rather this be carbon steel but this is fine um, it's thick walled so we can cut some threads in it the original handle is hollow just like this pipe so it should match pretty good so let's go over to the lathe We'll first cut the threads on this guy, then we'll attempt to knurl it and not mess it up, hopefully. Well, here's our soon-to-be handle, and there's quite a few operations in between this piece of pipe and an actual handle that we can use, and I'm going to bring you over here. I'm going to show you how I set up the lathe to do it, and then we'll get started. We're going to try to take every step that we can so we don't mess this up because I got one piece of pipe. All right. Now, here's our quick change gearbox and our different threads per inch we can get with all these different gears. Here's, I guess, what you would call our primary gear. This is uh, just one through three, which is here. And then all these, these are lines down to each hole from each row. We want 
12 threads branch. So we're over here, 12 threads branch. In section, or in gear section number two, and we're in number two. So that should be good. Now let's go over to the lathe. We'll put our part in. We'll blue it. We'll do a scratch pass. We'll check it with our thread gauge just so we don't make any mistakes. Square the end of this pipe up first. Piece of pipe is pretty warped, but I think it will be just fine. Get a good solid sound. We know we got a continuous surface. Then I'm going to use this same tool. Come in, and get rid of the sharp corner. All right. Let's use our dicum. Blue this guy up. to about an inch and a quarter in. Just right there. Round about, good enough. I'm setting my carriage stop just to give me a visual on where I want to Stop, I'll watch it when it runs out or runs up. Slow it down. Let's say that's adequate. Engage our quick change gearbox. and set our zero. We're going to be plunging straight in. Call that zero. Get our lead screw. And that should be 12 threads per inch. piece of pipe. We can check it with this anyway. Alright. I never have to disengage my lead screw because I can just, or I have to, I can reverse my lead screw. I never have to disengage my half nut on this lathe. I'll bring you back in just a second and show you how it's done. Thread gauge. Just check it. And we are correct as far as our quick change gearbox, but I'm not happy about this run out in this. I should have checked this first. Uh, this was a furnace tube, so it's been really hot, this piece of stainless, uh, or it was a reactor. Uh, so it's been really hot and slightly warped. Not warped enough to where it's going to matter for a handle but it is going to matter for our threading, so we'll have to come up with something real quick to fix that. And 
doesn't look like there's much I can do. This pipe's just worked. It's worked on both ends, and it's what we're going to have to use. So we're going to try it anyway. If it turns out good, good. If it doesn't, we haven't really lost anything. I'm just feeding the tool directly in with the cross slide on this job. It's just easy. You get a direct reading, and then this big wave don't care about the tool pressure. So, I mean, you can set your compound up at 29 and a half or 30 degrees, and I believe that'll reduce it. But you know, for me, that this was easy. It, it uh, gives me a direct reading, and uh, and it's quick. Chase those one more time. Clean the tops of them up. clean the threads out in here a little bit. But I think that's going to work. Mm -hmm. Fits pretty good now. It took a little bit to get a good fit though. I'll just stop and start. Probably and check probably four times really maybe five times before I was you know happy but I wanted to sneak up on it because I don't want that handle to be loose I mean that is that's pretty good that's about as good as uh, as good as I'm gonna get so 
Now it's time to flip this thing around and knurl it. And that's really going to be kind of tough. I hope I can get a good, good pattern, but we'll take what we can get. Okay, all things considered so far. Turned out pretty well. Get it to focus. Not too bad for stainless, you know. It's, uh, sometimes the galling is an issue. But we just creeped up on it and just uh, nibbled away at it there at the end and really got a good fit. Now hopefully the rest of it will work out. The knurling can be kind of... Uh, Kind of tough, so and ours probably won't turn out as good as theirs as far as where it stops. We'll probably have a bleed in, so I'm just going to mark it and we'll mark, leave us a little extra length out here that way we can machine up to it and get a good clean start to our knurling. And it looks like what they've done when they knurled it. Looks like they knurled it and then they come back and made a really light machine pass up to the edge of the knurling so they didn't get a you know a bleed off. I'll probably have a bleed off uh, because this piece of pipe is somewhat warped. It's not a hundred percent straight. You can't see it by eye but when you get it in the lathe you can tell and uh, that may present some issues but I don't know. We'll see. We'll do the best we can on it. That's uh, that's all we can do. All right, here's where I really start, uh, you know, having issues. Um, you know, I'm no experienced knurler by any stretch, and I've only knurled a few things in my life. So, uh, you know, I start knurling this, and uh, I notice that my pattern starts getting off. So, I stop the camera and try, try to investigate and see see what it is that I'm doing wrong. And uh, I just forget to push, basically, uh, you know, record. And I'm sitting there talking to, you know, an empty shop instead of a recording camera. But, uh, you know, I just lose the footage. That's the way it goes. Sometimes you, uh, you win, sometimes you lose. This project was full of hiccups. Well, unfortunately, I, you could look at it that way if you wanted, but I think it's kind of fortunate. I pushed stop instead of record and didn't get my knurling of this, which is really unfortunate because I made a mistake anyway. Um, test piece. This piece of pipe's just too warped to use. Knurling is perfect and pretty. Piece that matters that I do on camera for thousands of people. Eh, not so great. <laughs> To be honest, it doesn't make any difference, but sometimes a project just doesn't work out the way you intended, and in fact, that's most projects. There's always the unintended things that you didn't think about, or the, you know, the, the screwballs that are thrown in, and this was one of them. Um, I don't know what went wrong, but once you get started in you know, you don't stop, because it's what's done is done. But actually, it's fine. I mean, I'm not too concerned about it, to be honest. It's a tap wrench handle. But uh, but it would have been nice if it would have turned out like I intended. Well, that was really quick. Quick little project. Uh, nothing special, but it turned out pretty nice. Um, other than the, the knurling hiccup, you know, I couldn't be happier. That is a monster tap wrench. And... Uh, can't say I don't have one anymore, that's for sure. Look at that. That's an A-bomb size wrench if, uh, if I ever seen it. I appreciate you watching, guys. This was just a little shorty. If you haven't, subscribe to the channel. Click on my little guy up here and hit the bell for notifications. And as always, I'll see you next time.